Hydra Clan Boss is the most difficult game mode to get into in Raid Shadow Legends as a new player. It's extremely intimidating. Six Hydra heads, basically six bosses in one encounter. So much stuff to learn. We're going to break it down for you in this video. So what is up, the guys? This is Cobra. Welcome to the three chapters of stuff that you just got to know and stuff that you got to bring into the Hydra Clan boss to make this fight way, way easier. I'm not going to go into, oh, this is what each of the Hydra heads do and blah, 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 blah. You can just read about that anyway, right? I don't need to cover that if you can literally read it in the game. What I'm going to cover instead are very, very budget options and budget tools and key tools and debuffs that you must bring into this fight and then explain why. First and foremost, I should say as well that if you're a new player, you unlock Hydra for the first time, you're going to get your ass kicked, you're going to do like 20,000 damage, it's going to be an absolute waste of time, okay? But as soon as you were able to deal at least 1.67 million damage to normal Hydra clan boss, start doing it every week okay even if it takes all three keys just to get this done very very important that you are collecting these chests as soon as possible because why the hell would you not it's free potentially five and six star gear you also are going to start to collect mithrala fragments from hydra as well those are very very important indeed you can eventually fuse the legendary void champion mithrala in your portal building and so you might as well start collecting the fragments as soon as you possibly can so i cannot stress this enough as soon as you can hit 1.67 million damage even if it takes all three keys you better get it done all right man before we get into Chapter 1, which is going to be key debuffs to bring into Hydra. Hey, man, if you're looking to set up a new Raid Shadow Legends account, you know what time it is, man. It's time to click the beginner promo link down below at the top of the video description box, man. Hit that link, sign up to Raid using that link, and you'll get yourself four free Epic Champions to start your juiced up new account. It's an incredible beginner promo link, man. The best way to start off a new Raid Alt account, and it can all be yours, man. All you got to do is sign out of Plarium Play on your goddamn PC before clicking on that link to guarantee that when you create a new Plarium ID and stuff, you're going to get your hands on all of those souped up rewards. All right, so chapter number one is going to be the longest chapter in this video. It's going to cover the buffs and debuffs, mostly the debuffs that you absolutely must bring into Hydra, as well as some optional debuffs as well that are going to help you out. The key debuffs are as follows. Block buffs. Okay, an AoE block buffs against Hydra is going to prevent the Hydra heads buffing themselves with the Poison Cloud buff, which you really, really don't want. You must bring a block buffs debuff. You're also going to want to bring an AoE decrease speed, preferably the strong version, and then a reliable provoke. Provoke debuff is absolutely crucial for provoking the Head of Decay. The Head of Decay is the only head that can be provoked in Hydra, so you'll know which one it is pretty soon. And if you don't keep the Head of Decay provoked, it's going to do things like cleanse all of your debuffs from the enemy, right, across all of the Hydra heads. Not good. You must keep that head either dead or provoked. Very, very crucial. So those are the three absolutely mandatory debuffs that I'd say that you must bring into Hydra. Other good debuffs to bring along are going to be decreased defense for just massively bolstering your damage. Also, it's got to be said that just getting the Hydra heads dead um, can make it so that you require things like less healing and you can get away with less healing and less revives and stuff like that because if the Hydra heads are dead, then they can't kill you, right? So decreased defense is actually just quite important uh, overall. Uh, a hex debuff is very, very crucial to bring as well. A hex debuff is going to bolster up your damage by a hell of a lot. And one of the Hydra heads, the Head of Mischief, can only be targeted by your single target skills if it has a hex debuff applied on it. So the hex debuff is very, very crucial indeed. So when it comes to bringing the hex debuff, what you can do is just take a support champion that has a couple of AoE skills and put them in a cursed set. And that cursed set will give you a chance on one of your support champions to just apply hex debuff to all of the Hydra heads that they are AoE attacking. So that's an option that you've got there. Decreased attack debuff can be pretty damn crucial as well, particularly for surviving the big AoE counter attacks coming in from the Head of Wrath. And finally, we have the Leech debuff, which is another debuff that's just kind of nice to have. What you're really looking for is champions that bring a couple, like two or more, of each of these skills wrapped up in their kit, right? But before we get into those, we're also going to cover some of the key buffs that you want to probably be bringing as well. The first is, of course, going to be an AoE increased speed. The reasons for that are obvious. Uh, you're also going to want, want to bring either a block debuffs buff or some debuff removal. Heals, shields, and revives, just anything that you can bring to the table to help keep your team alive as well. And then finally, Perfect Veil. This is a tough 
uh, buff to come across, the Perfect Veil buff. But what it's going to do is make it so that when you are attacking into the Head of Torment, what normally happens is you get afflicted with a true fear debuff every time you attack in to the Head of Torment, which sucks. It can't be resisted. It can't be blocked. It can be dispelled, right? You can't, you can't cleanse it, but it's going to be active on your team a hell of a lot. Otherwise, if one of your champions attacks into the Head of uh, torment with a perfect veil buff active however then they completely dodge the true fear debuff so perfect veil great for survivability and it is great for countering the head of torment but that's a tough buff to come across now again just like with the debuffs ideally you're bringing champions into hydra that bring two or more of these debuffs buffs or any combination uh, of the two that's gonna be your best bet if you feel like i'm missing any kind of debuffs off of this list feel free to drop them down below in the comments but do be aware that chapter two of this video we're going to be talking about damage dealers and optimal damage dealing uh, into Hydra. And we're going to be talking about HP burn in that chapter as well. So what are some examples of some affordable-ish, some budget-ish champions that you can be bringing into Hydra that bring all of these tools or as many of these kind of buffs and debuff tools as you can possibly get your hands on, Ben? The first champion that we're going to go ahead and shout out is going to be a Void Epic, uh, Ostrox Bornglaive. This is just a great, great champ. Indeed, mostly because of his A2 and his A3, right? So on the A2, it's an attack all enemies, uh, and if four or more enemies are alive, has a 100% chance when bucked up of placing a block buff debuff on each enemy for three turns. So very, very, very good uh, block buffs uptime on this. It's going to prevent that Poison Cloud debuff from going up. And the Poison Cloud debuff, by the way, makes it so that all of your attacks are weak hitting into the Hydra heads, which is terrible i mean basically makes them low-key immortal uh things are gonna go bad for you very very quickly if they get that buff active on all of the hydra heads simultaneously it's gonna be dreadful so this is gonna help you out a hell of a lot and on ostrox's a3 we've got removes one random debuff from all allies and you get an increased accuracy buff as well uh, so a little bit of debuff removal always helps there's gonna be a lot of provokes coming out against your team uh the true fears we've already mentioned things like anti-healing and stuff like that Ostrox is going to be a good help, a good utility option to bring those key debuffs and those cleansers as well, man. Next up, we've got good old Ugo, which, would you believe it, is the champion that you can get completely for free simply by signing up to raid using the beginner promo link down below. But we're not going to go over that beginner promo link again. You guys already know what's up with that. But Ugo brings all kinds of tools to the table as well. Actually brings a leech on her A1. Uh, which is great. That's one of those kind of nice to have debuffs into Hydra, just helping your damage dealers self heal a little bit. Also brings the strong version of decreased defense on an AoE and a block buffs debuff also on an AoE on a 310 cooldown. So two very, very key debuffs to be bringing into Hydra here on Ugo as well. Ugo also has the advantage of being a magic affinity champ. So it's very, very easy to get your hands on Ugo uh, compared to the likes of the uh, Ostrox, the Void Epic, you know. Typically, you're going to find an Ugo before you find an Ostrox, is what I'm saying. And then on A3, you've also got some heal reduction debuff removal uh, on Ugo's A3, and it also removes one additional random debuff from allies as well, and then heals a whole bunch too. So Ugo's great. Ugo brings a lot to the table, and it's one of the best sort of, I mean, budget epics in the game that's still used in just a lot of pretty high-end Hydra teams. And it's one of those champs that you're definitely going to get a hell of a lot of value out of if you pull an Ugo early on your account, man. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and cover Vizix the Unbowed. Vizix is, of course, a login reward champion that you're going to have to, like, 270 days of playing raids after nine months uh, of playing raid. So you might have to wait a little while to get your hands on Vizix. She's, of course, not the only provoker option that you've got. There are others out there that are more budget, but she is a good option. She's a little bit tough to keep alive, though, because of her kit. So let's break it down real quick, man. So her A2 is an attack all enemies with 100% chance booked of placing decreased speed for two turns, which is, again, a fantastic one of those mandatory debuffs that you have to bring into Hydra. Uh, it's just so, so important. However, she also places an ally protection buff on all allies uh, for two turns as well. Now, ally protection is, is of course, a fantastic survivability buff uh, to be bringing on one of your champs. It's not quite as good as it might seem into Hydra, however, because, frankly, the damage can get extremely um, mental very, very quickly. And even a Vizix built with, like, pretty good health and high defense can still die. And so oftentimes you've got to run it alongside a Reviver, alongside champions that are providing shields and that kind of thing, just to help the Vizix stay alive um, and build out just 
especially with as much health as you possibly can, right? The ally protection can be as much of a, a hindrance as it can be a help in Hydra. So just be aware of that, man. Uh, it's a bit of a double-edged sword, right? The A3 is an attack all enemies that uh, places Provoke for one 10, which is great, and she also shields herself a little bit too. It's on a 310 cooldown. This just means that you're going to have to build your physics with, you know, 10 meter boosters on your team, increase speed on your team, and get it going pretty quickly because you want to be getting this A3 off as often as possible. You want to keep it maintained and get around again to using this A3 as quickly as possible against the Head of Decay uh, before the Provoke eventually falls off. Uh, so you do have to be aware of that, right? You have to build her to be pretty fast. Uh, but besides that, Physics is a pretty good option. Um, a good budget option that you can consider, and this is a champ we're going to revisit a little bit later on in the video as well, for Chapter 3, which is a little bit more of an advanced chapter, if I do say so myself, at least for new players, uh, is going to be Skiramis. Skiramis brings a AoE Provoke debuff as well, which is great. Then he also places a counterattack and continuous heal buff on himself for a couple of turns, and that's why we're going to revisit Skiramis a little bit later on for the mischief tank role at least a budget option uh, for that role right but we'll get into that when we get into it basically it's the same as Vizix. it's going to be a 310 cooldown provoke when it's fully bucked up and he's a good option uh, for doing that however yeah you're going to need to make sure that you build them fast enough so that you get around again to using this provoke as quickly as you possibly can now as for hex damage dealers the hex debuff is kind of tough to come by if you are lucky enough to get your hands on the likes of good old Akemptum, <laughs> then Akemptum is a great, great AoE damage dealer into Hydra, mostly uh, owing to his A2, which is an attack all enemies three times each hit with a 75% chance booked of increasing the duration of hex debuffs on enemies by 110. If they're not under a hex debuff, it will place the hex debuff instead. And so... Yeah, Akemptum, he also has like a lot of debuff spread effects, a lot of poison effects and stuff like that, which poison isn't the best form of damage into Hydra, but it's not nothing. Um, and Akemptum can do a pretty goddamn moderate amount of damage into Hydra, right? He's one of your damage dealer options, but he does also bring the Hex debuff in a very, very reliable fashion. And he's only an epic quality champ as well, so maybe he's more accessible than some of the others, you know? Uh, otherwise, what you're generally going to want to do is go ahead and pick up a support style champion, like a champion that I've got on my main account uh, just now. She'd bring like a whole lot of debuff cleanse and heal and stuff like that, but on an A1, and this is what you want to watch out for, right? A support champion that has attack all enemies woven into their skills is a great candidate to then equip in the likes of a cursed artifact set, which will give them a chance to be placing that hex debuff for you. You know, so suddenly you've got like a support champion that's mostly bringing heals or buffs or whatever, but now they're also fulfilling the extra role of getting the hex debuff applied. And so that's the way that you can bring the hex debuff uh, into your team and just help to spread your damage out across all of the Hydra heads that little bit more. And of course, the head of mischief, once again, can only be targeted if the hex debuff is applied over there. So that's an option that you've got there. Next up for cleansers and uh, debuff removal, we of course have the likes of Doom Priest being one of the best budget option cleansers in the game. Uh, we've covered Doom Priest a few times, but again, it's all about our passive. Every single turn, she heals allies for a little bit and removes one random debuff from them at the start of this champion's turn. So you just want to get a Doom Priest if you can in something like a Relentless set so she gets extra turns every now and then, build her as fast as humanly possible, and just get her spamming this passive as much as you possibly can. She's going to be cleansing Provokes, True Fears, Poisons, uh, Anti-Healing. Yeah, she's... I mean, she's crazy good as a budget option for getting started into Hydra. And yeah, she fulfills one of those happy, happy, all-important roles of just healing and debuff removal. So she's a great option. Next up, as for additional, in fact, also in this faction, we've got Rector Drath, which is another great support champion to bring into Hydra. Brings a decrease attack on the air one. Most importantly, though, Rector Drath is one of the best, like, affordable uh, budget options to bring along to your team for placing Perfect Veil on your team, right? She brings all kinds of healing. She also brings a revive as well, uh, which is great. And when she revives, she also places the Perfect Veil on the person that she revived, which is nice. But her A2, heal all allies by 20% of Rector's max HP. After healing, place a perfect veil buff for two turns on allies with full HP. Uh, then place a continuous heal buff as well. But the fact that she's also bringing a perfect veil to the team is awesome. It's actually one of the most affordable counters that you've got going for going into the likes of the Head of Wrath, which otherwise is going to be placing those true fear buffs all the time. Perfect veil is one of the only ways to get around the true fear debuff. 
uh, going into Hydra, and it's a huge, huge pain otherwise. It is not, however, the only thing that you can bring into Hydra to counter the uh, Head of Wrath. We, of course, have Inquisitor Shamil, which, if you happen to pull this guy at any time in the first six months of your account, I guarantee you have a lot of people very, very jealous of you indeed. Right, so Inquisitor Shamil uh, attacks one enemy on his A1, has a, I think, 75% chance booked of decreasing the duration of a random buff on the target by 110, which is fine. Every time an enemy places a debuff on an ally, such as True Fear, use this skill against that enemy. These counterattacks only deal half of the normal damage. Okay, fair enough, you know. Cool, 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 cool. On the A2, attacks one enemy three times, ignores 25% of the target's defense, will ignore a further 25% of the target's defense for each buff on this champion, place a True Fear debuff on all enemies for 110 if this attack kills an enemy. Not that relevant into Hydra. Shamil, it's about his passive, man. Each critical hit fills this champion's turn mid by 7.5%. Whenever an ally receives a fear or a true fear debuff from an enemy, there's no cooldown on this, by the way. This skill will instantly remove the debuff and fill the team leader's 10 meter by 15%. Dude, I know what this skill does, but every time I read it, I just can't believe it. Even more that it's a real thing. Like, so good. This is so good. It's not even funny. It just makes it so that the head of uh, Torment no longer exists, okay? Inquisitor Shamil, another fantastic option. He's more of like a damage dealing role, but I'm gonna throw him into the um, buffers and debuffers and utility chapter of this video, just because, um, yeah, he's so unique uh, in what he does. So based on those champion recommendations that we've covered so far, this is the budget team that we are building so far. Unfortunately, our only provoker that I can actually use in this example team happens to be a legendary, uh, which I'm going to try to avoid for the rest of the options, but it is Bevald of the Thorn. Uh, he's going to be acting as our provoker. We've got our block buffs debuffer coming in uh, with Ugo, which is great. We've got our increased speed buffer coming in, which is just a high cartoon, which is not the best option at all, but we're going to try and keep this team as budget as humanly possible uh, just to get like a fair representation of what your team might look like going. And then we've got Doom Priest in as a healer and debuff cleanser. Now for chapter two of this video, where we're going to talk about the damage dealers. It's going to be quite short, but quite important. All right, man, so for your damage dealers, there are really three different types of damage dealers into Hydra. Again, this is going to be quite a short section, but quite important to note, the first damage dealing type are going to be your mass HP burners. HP burn is just a great, consistent way of dealing damage uh, across all of the Hydra heads. Enough said, really. We don't really have to go more into it than that, to be fair. Uh, max HP damage dealers are also going to be very, very crucial indeed. And number three is just going to be heavy hitter legendary damage dealers who don't really have any particular gimmick going on, but they just kind of smack really, really hard, usually with a mix of big single target hitters and AoE skills. Yeah, so let's cover some examples, shall we? The very first HP burner and, like, easiest option to get your hands on is going to be the Force Affinity Epic uh, Mordecai of the Secret Order. Quite easy to get your hands on without him being a Void Epic, and very simply put, he brings a AoE HP burn debuff on all enemies for a couple of turns, and because he's not dealing damage directly with this skill, it's not like attack all enemies has a 100% chance of placing HP burn, it's just place HP burn. Uh, it means that he actually can't weak hit into the Hydra heads, and so Mordecai has that extra advantage going for him, right? Uh, it doesn't matter that he's Force Affinity, he's not going to struggle landing this debuff uh, against any of the Hydra heads. Of course, you've also got another option uh, in the form of where Skrank at, man. There he is. Very, very similar champion in how he's placing his HP burn debuffs. Uh, his is in attack all enemies and place HP burn, but he also can't weak hit because he's Void Affinity, right? And so, yeah, Skrank is also just a fantastic HP burner uh, style option. Next champion we're going to cover is going to be one of your max HP damage dealers, and this is going to be one of the champions we use in the example towards the end of this video, and that is going to be good old Royal Guard, who on his A2 brings an attack all enemies. Damage increases according to enemy max HP. These are going to be... Uh, there's Royal Guard, there's also Husk, uh, one of the undead hordes epics that does a very, very similar skill to this and how it deals damage. Yeah, these skills just hit very, very hard into basically all bosses in the game, and Royal Guard is great for the Hydra job. Uh, for that reason. You might find that it doesn't hit very hard into the, like, normal Hydra, but because the uh, enemy max HP of the Hydras increases, the harder difficulty you go, 
the damage keeps up pretty well, so you can use Royal Guard and Normal, then once you're ready to take on Hard and Brutal, Royal Guard can still be doing pretty good damage against the Hydra Heads, right? He's never going to be as good as, you know, the best, like, legendary damage dealers and stuff, but as far as budget option goes, he's amazing. He brings a decreased defense on his AR1, and it also brings an AoE, albeit an attack four times at random, uh, strong version of decreased speed as well on his A3. So, Royal Guard, another fantastic option. Or when it comes down to just a legendary that's just going to hit Hydra very, very hard. I mean, if you've used Thor, he's going to be your go-to. Uh, Ninja is a great option. He's kind of like a mix of HP burn damage and uh, just like direct damage, you know. But Thor is an incredible option. Multiple AoE skills that just hit very, very hard. A passive that kind of stacks up over the course of the fight. Um, yeah, the damage dealing role is very, very kind of uh, fluid when it comes to Hydra. So we're going to head on back into our Hydra team that we're setting up for normal just over here. And we're going to go ahead and key in good old Royal Guard. Where is he? There he is. And our other damage dealer, do we just throw a Skrank in there? We throw a Skrank in there as well, man. So this would be our very, very budget looking Hydra style team and if you don't have a lot of epic champs in your account just yet That's totally fine. Your team might not look exactly like this and again The Bivald is a little bit of an outlier because he's the only legendary provoker option that I've got uh, To take in to Hydra for this example team before we get started There is one more chapter to this video that we got to cover one more chapter That's a little bit more advanced that might not apply to you right away when you first start playing Hydra But it's important nonetheless to bear in mind now. This is because the head of mischief which I think is this head right here, actually. Uh, what it's going to do, it's going to attack into whichever champion on your team has the most buffs on your team. And it's going to try to steal those buffs, okay? It will steal those buffs from that champion. And then if you let it, it's also going to use a buff spread effect and spread all of those buffs to all of the other Hydra heads, right? That's part of the reason why the block debuffs buff is so, so important, right? Because it's just like the simplest answer for uh, at least stopping the Head of Mischief from spreading all of those buffs to all the other Hydra heads, right? But what this means is, is that you can build a champion like Bevald of the Thorn to act as your Mischief tank. So let's get into that, man. That is going to be Chapter 3, man. Setting up your good old Mischief tank. And instead of Bevald, we're going to use a very, very budget option in Skiramis as an example for your Mischief tank. Because, again, Skiramis brings a very, very unique A3 here where he's not just placing the Provoke, but he's also placing a counterattack and continuous heal buff on himself as well on his A3. These are quite unique buffs to bring, and especially if your team isn't bringing any continuous heal, Skiramis is going to be the only champ on your team that has these two extra buffs, right? Meaning he has the most buffs on your team, and the Head of Mischief is going to do all it can to attack into your Skiramis basically every time and do its best to steal uh, his buffs. So what this means is, you might have heard of people talking about a Mischief tank before. We could build out, hypothetically, Skiramis to be our Mischief tank in Hydra. And the way that you want to do that is, we still want to build him out to do his job, right? He needs enough accuracy to land his provokes. He needs enough speed to get around to using his provoke again as quickly as he can. All of those things still apply. However, what we'd also want to try and do is build him out with, I think it's 300 resistance into normal Hydra would make him an effective mischief tank. 350 resistance for hard Hydra and 400 resistance for brutal Hydra. And what that's going to do is make it so that when the head of mischief is constantly trying to steal his buffs, because again, he's always going to have the most buffs, he's going to be very, very, very likely to be resisting the attempt of the Hydra head to steal those buffs, right? And so what that's going to do is not only protect all of his buffs and uh, continuously force the Head of Mischief to attack into him, it's also going to inadvertently protect all of the other buffs on your champions too, right? Because otherwise, the Head of Mischief will steal Skiramis' buffs, then it's going to move on to the next guy and the next guy, and it's going to start to strip all of the buffs off of your team, which is bad news, obviously, right? So while this is a bit more advanced and it's going to be tough for you as a beginner to build out a champion with all of the stats that you need to build like a high resistance uh, mischief tank champion. This is something that you can bear in mind uh, once you're a few months into Hydra and maybe you're progressing onto, you know, hard or brutal. You can start to think about going back to normal and like hard difficulties and think about building out your first mischief tank and just get a taste for it and um, see how it plays out. It can be a damn good help. And actually speaking of that, we do have our Bivald of the Thorn built out as a mischief tank just inadvertently. It's just the way that I built him out. Uh, he has enough resistance to go up into uh, hard Hydra right now. 
And it was just my first uh, attempt at building out a mischief tank. So there you go. That's basically all you need to know to get started in Hydra. Let's go ahead and just see how this team plays out. And hopefully it's not a complete disaster. <laughs> when I tried it out a little bit earlier this morning, prepared it a little bit earlier this morning, we almost died. Okay, it almost went pretty bad. But again, this team's very, very budget. That's okay, you know. Again, you only need to do like 1.67 million damage. 1.67 for the first Hydra chest. That's great. That should be quite achievable. Um, as long as you're bringing like the key uh, debuffs and stuff that we are bringing here. You can just see, by the way, that the Poison Cloud debuff uh, just went up on one of the Hydra heads here. Because Ugo failed to land the Block Buffs debuff on one of the heads. It's not the end of the world if it goes up on one of them. But as long as it's not going up on all of them, we should be able to get some Hydra head kills and be fine. You're also going to notice that a lot of our champs are provoked right now as well. And hopefully it's going to be Doom Priest's turn uh, after Bivald just now. And she's going to get to cleanse uh, all of those debuffs. And I've completely forgot whatever the hell it was that I was just saying. Oh yeah, if you can do like, is it like 6 or 7 million damage to normal Hydra? You're getting the max level chest. That's not nothing. You'll also find that when you're getting started in Hydra 2, that just getting the kill on one head for the first time makes a huge difference. Like, you go from not being able to do anything into Hydra and getting stuck at like a million damage and feeling really, really bad. Once you got one head dead, suddenly the fight goes very, very much into your favor because there's just less mechanics for you to deal with all of a sudden. Um, and you start doing fine. So if we just kind of let this play out, we're just going to see um, we're just going to see that we're able to do enough damage here to sort of get the max level Hydra key uh, for normal, which is only like 6 or 7 million damage, should, so it shouldn't take very long. Um, yeah, you can see how this team, even though it's not optimal and we don't have a super reliable way of placing decreased speed, uh, against these Hydra heads, we're just relying on Royal Guard. Oh, there it is. Actually, he used it just now. It only landed on two of the Hydra heads, the uh, Decrease Speed debuff. So even though we're lacking some of like the key tools here, we've got enough of those boxes checked that we're able to keep things ticking. Now, it's by no means like a super impressive team, but it doesn't have to be. It's a stat, right? And that's what's important, man. And it looks like we might be able to just live as well. Royal Guard's getting a little bit low there, but... And all right, it would appear that we have beheaded three of the Hydras, and I was just reminded by uh, James in chat, thanks so much, man, um, that actually if the Poison Cloud debuff goes up on one of the Hydra heads, you can actually attack through the Poison Cloud and not weak hit, and you can sort of, um, you can sort of ignore the po Poison Cloud debuff to an extent, as long as you have an HP burn debuff on the Hydra heads as well. So that's just another reason why having an HP burner uh, on one of your damage dealers uh, can be very, very beneficial. It makes sure the Poison Cloud is not quite as consequential if the Hydra Heads do get it up. So, yeah, there is that to bear in mind as well. And as you can see, we're trudging our way very, very easily uh, towards the 6 million damage required. And so we're basically good to go ahead and end the battle here and basically consider this one a job well done. So, there you go, man. I hope that this guide was at least somewhat helpful, man, for getting you started into Hydra. And hey, if you feel like you can give it off to a better start than what I showed off in this video, then why not do so by starting off a new Raid Channel Legends account, man, using the beginner promo link down below, man, to jumpstart your fresh new Raid account with four free epic champions, man. It's the best beginner promo link going. And hey, thanks for watching, everybody. Hopes that this guide was helpful and just helped you to get started into Hydra for the first time. Or if you haven't quite unlocked Hydra yet, you at least now know what kind of tools you might want to start collecting on your account just to be ready for this monumental challenge when it does eventually show up and become um, become part of your weekly grind on your account. All right. Thanks again, everybody. Hope you all did enjoy. And I'm going to catch all of you all just a tad bit later, man.